sometimes I wake up in this, this year sense that uh, 50% of my clients are reading the obituaries to see if their instruments are worth more because I'm gone, and 50% of the clients are frantic that I might die before I deliver their guitars. I guess I have a reputation for fucking things up around here. See, there was one where I was putting a set of sides in a mold and they cracked. God damn it! Since I had my hands on it, it was my fault. God damn it, Ben! The good news is, I might be able to fix it. The bad news is it might be your guitar. And if I screw that one up, that's like epic because that can't be replaced. Ben is the, uh, the dupe. I mean, he's dumped himself the fuck up on the shop. Fucking up on this guitar is definitely not an option. Ben fucked up Seal's guitar. Um, Seal's guitar got fucked up. Like I said, on the record, I fucked it up. In a nutshell, my childhood was, uh, for the first part, um, pretty much covered up because my mom was a uh, crack addict. Shortly after I started playing music, I decided to run away. I mean, so I lived uh, with my grandma. But I was on every single uh, missing children's website. Michael Jackson, you can't forget <laughs> MJ, dude, come on. Michael inspired me to be the best, as you can see. We have Michael up there next to the clock. The guy's beautiful cheekbones like Pocahontas. That would have been my, like, make a wish thing. <laughs> I just want to stay a night at the ranch. Life's a lot to experience, so you gotta kind of gotta go extreme every time. I had had my hand sucked into a five horsepower router. I go to Tony. He looks at me. He's like, "Is it all right?" I'm like, "No, dude, it's fucked up. You need to call an ambulance." And he was just about to go in shock. My doctor walks in and he takes the cover over my hand, and the immediately uh, the action he does is this. Whew. So I had like uh, pins in there for a while. I had to take the whole summer off of work. I mean, I only have really the use of my index finger and anything. I could barely hold a drumstick, yeah? I opened my mouth up a little bit too much, more than usual, more than I should. If there's ever a problem and it's some sort of thing where somebody has said something about somebody, you get to the bottom, it's always Matt. Like Matt is, you know, always the butt of every joke here because he's Matt and, you know, he's the one person who when we went away together for our big vacation as a group, he's the one guy who got naked and, you know, peed in the hot tub and tried to teabag Bobby. <laughs> Mike is a really rare bird. He's a guy who is 40, thinks he's going on 22. I have to remind him continuously that he's actually approaching middle age. Would you find that in a dumpster or something? You're giving this to me. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Mike, totally crazy. Sausage driven, uh, will eat things out of the garbage. I've seen him do it. He ate a pickled pig's foot that he dropped in the garbage, ate the rest of the pig's foot he had in his hand, went in for the pickled pig's foot that was in the garbage. Chip is another guy who comes in, does his work, is always a very soulful guy, and he looks like Jesus too. He's, he's a, sometimes I want to ask him to forgive me. Yes, I, it's a lot of people tell me I look like Jesus, yeah, but my name is actually uh, Chip Norton, not Jesus, not fucking hippie, not anything like that, you know. Let's see, I've come into work drunk, I've shown up hours late, not even called. He's gone from everything from white supremacist and Nazi to, um, you know, to uh, DUIs, to being taken away to a Mexican self-esteem camp for uh, drug use. Even when shit got pretty bad, he, he still let me keep my job, so... I guess that's what kept me from going overboard. I think the most stressful time for us is always payroll. I forgot my checkbook. Hope you don't mind if I pay you change. <laughs> the pay schedule. There's a pay schedule? Yeah, my dad was out messing around and uh, my mom was out looking for him. And she ran him over and split his head open. That was the start of their uh, love relationship right there. You know, for a while I thought I'd push Tony into management and I realized that it's probably not his role. Tony is like a machine. Just he's so regimented and like disciplined. Is this for anybody specific? Do you know who this is? Frankie is one of those guys, there's not much noise associated with Frankie. He comes in, he's cheery, he does his thing, he's been on the road, he's had jobs for other people, he knows what it is to work for a complete asshole. I would work two jobs and then get off my two jobs and then would come here and start learning alongside with Mike. He's really quiet and chill, and while he doesn't always get all his work done, I think that he will the more he's here. Basically, we're all like a group of kids. It's kind of like the, uh, the boys club or something. He is the man. 
he throws the party. Um, he knows the people. Tom makes these guitars his. And they write us back and say, this is an incredible guitar. It's worth every penny I put into it. Um, it's, a, it's a good feeling. When I was 18, he was part of a show of blue guitars that went to the Smithsonian. So after I graduated, I went with him and we put his guitar in the Smithsonian together. And that's when I really realized that what he does is so unique and that his, his guitars are some of the best in the world. And that when they say he's the modern Stradivari, that they mean it, that that's really what he is. Really what it is, is it's about 5% of that orgiastic to a chance to get your hand near the face of God. And it's about 95% total sausage making.